Greetings, dear subscribers and casual listeners of my channel. Let's start by trying to understand how Muggleborns come into existence in ordinary human families, based on the knowledge provided by the magical universe. Most likely, a Muggleborn wizard is a distant descendant of a squib who once married a non-magical person. It is believed that squibs, who carry magical genes, left the magical world at some point and settled among muggles to start a new life and adapt to their circumstances. Centuries later, after many generations have passed and the family has long forgotten about their magical ancestor, a child is suddenly born with magical abilities. This child is known as a muggle-born, meaning that while their parents are ordinary people, they carry the magical genes of a distant squib ancestor. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry offers the right to study and take their rightful place in the school to all children who can manifest their magical abilities. This has been happening for a long time, and by the time we enter the world of Harry Potter, we see that there are already quite a few Muggleborns in Hogwarts and other areas of magical society. This, by the way, causes clear displeasure among pure-blood wizards. However, the law is the law and as soon as a child's name appears in the Book of Admittance, the future Hogwarts student immediately receives a letter of invitation to the school. It should be noted that the letter to Muggleborns is not just sent without further action. To ensure everything goes smoothly, a representative of the magical community, either a Hogwarts staff member or someone from the Ministry of Magic, visits the child's home. This representative meets with the parents and explains in detail that their child is a wizard. Strictly speaking, this moment constitutes a direct violation of the statute of secrecy as it reveals the existence of magic to muggles. However, this is a sanctioned and permissible exception by certain authorities. Moreover, the representative has the right to perform a bit of magic in the presence of the parents to convince them that magic truly exists and that they are not being deceived. The representative also briefly explains why wizards keep their existence a secret and shares the joy that their child has manifested magical genes and will now attend a real school of magic. Nonetheless, the parents have the final say in whether their child will attend Hogwarts or not. There have been instances in history where parents refused to let their son or daughter study magic. This usually happened due to certain religious beliefs that led parents to reject the idea of their child becoming involved with magic. If the parents make such a choice, the representative drafts a special protocol that officially states the reason the child cannot attend Hogwarts. The parents then agree to have their memories of the representative's visit erased. If everything goes well, and the parents agree to send their child to school, the representative provides detailed instructions on the next steps, and the child receives a copy of A History of Magic by Batilda Bagshot to learn more about the world they will soon enter. After some time, the representative returns to help the young wizard purchase all necessary school supplies in Diagon Alley where they also assist in exchanging muggle money for galleons, sickles, and knuts. The final step in this process is boarding the Hogwarts Express, after which the young wizard begins their independent life in this new yet wonderful magical world. Understanding why muggle-born children appear and how they enter the magical world through their education at Hogwarts helps us appreciate just how carefully this world is hidden from outsiders. However, despite all the efforts to maintain this secrecy, there have been instances throughout history where muggles almost uncovered the existence of the magical world. Although these situations were successfully avoided, they serve as a reminder of the fragile boundary between the two worlds. Let's examine seven such instances where muggles nearly discovered the secret of the magical world, but by some miracle, didn't. Situation number one. Aunt Marge. It was never easy for Harry Potter to live with the Dursleys, but Aunt Marge was a special kind of torment. One evening at dinner, when Marge insulted Harry again, something incredible happened. 
she began to inflate like a giant balloon and soon floated up to the ceiling. It was a shocking moment for everyone in the room. But here's the strange thing. No one in Little Whinging noticed. Little Whinging is a quiet suburb where every little incident attracts attention. A flying woman is something that would immediately cause a commotion. Panic sounds, screams, these would have drawn the neighbor's attention. But none of that happened. Why didn't anyone rush outside to see what was going on? Normally, such a scene would cause absolute chaos. Imagine someone seeing a floating woman and calling the police. Journalists would have arrived in no time and little whinging would have made front-page news. But everything went surprisingly quietly. Harry wasn't even punished for using magic outside of school. It all seemed as if nothing had happened. Wizards know how to cover their tracks. When Harry accidentally inflated Aunt Marge, the Ministry of Magic acted swiftly. They appeared immediately, deflated Marge, and erased her memory. But that was only part of the job. It was important that no neighbours found out what had happened. The Ministry employed its standard measures, memory-erasing spells and concealment charms. The Obliviate spell is a powerful tool in the hands of wizards. It erases the memories of muggles who have witnessed magic. This time it was likely used on anyone who might have noticed something unusual. People either forgot or simply couldn't comprehend what they had seen. That's why no one panicked over a flying woman. Rowling often mentions that wizards possess sophisticated ways of hiding. Perhaps the Dursley's house and its surroundings were temporarily made invisible. Our illusions were created to conceal what was happening inside. The Confundus charm could have confused anyone who accidentally looked their way. They simply didn't understand what they saw. Situation number two. The night bus. The night bus is like something out of a nightmare. An enormous, three-story bus that appears out of nowhere and speeds through the streets at a wild pace. But the most surprising thing is that muggles don't see it. How is that possible when this monster literally shakes the ground? Imagine a dark night, an empty street, and suddenly, loud crashing noises, the screeching of tires. The night bus appears, weaving between cars. In the books, it's described as if the bus disappears before anyone can notice it. But in the films, it clearly impacts the physical world. Cars bounce, trash cans are knocked over. How can muggles not notice? This is where it gets interesting. In the books, the night bus is supposed to be invisible. But if it's making such noise and leaving behind a mess, how do muggles not notice? In the films, the bus is seen pushing everything out of its way. Yet muggles continue with their lives as if nothing is happening. It seems almost unreal. Logic suggests that the invisibility of the night bus extends beyond just sight. Perhaps muggles not only don't see it, but they also don't hear it. This would explain why they ignore all the noise and chaos the bus creates. But what about the physical evidence of its presence? The theory of invisibility starts to falter. For example, in the films, the night bus is shown pushing cars and knocking over trash cans. Even if muggles don't see the bus, they should notice the aftermath. A car suddenly moved, a trash can overturned. This is impossible not to notice. Why doesn't anyone react? Perhaps the wizards take it a step further. Maybe they use additional spells so that muggles don't associate strange events with anything magical. When the night bus passes by, muggles might simply not realise what's happening or chalk it up to coincidence. It's also possible that the night bus has a special kind of magic that distorts perception. Muggles may not notice changes or explain them away as ordinary events. For example, a trash can overturned. It was the wind. A car shifted. Maybe someone accidentally nudged it. Everything seems simple and logical if you don't know the truth. Situation number three. Owls on Privet Drive. Privet Drive was always a place where nothing disrupted the usual order. Neighbours knew everything about each other and immediately noticed any deviation from the norm. But one day, a whole flock of owls descended on the Dursley's house. 
Harry Potter was receiving his letters from Hogwarts, and no attempts by Uncle Vernon to stop this flow were successful. The owls kept coming back. Why didn't any of the neighbours notice? Imagine a quiet street at dawn. Suddenly dozens of owls start landing on house number four. They cover the roof, eaves and fence. This sight should have shocked and raised questions among everyone who saw it. But on Privet Drive, there was complete silence. No one peeked out of their windows. No one called animal control. How is this possible? In real life, such a scene would cause panic. Owls are nocturnal birds, and if there are so many of them, it's definitely not by chance. Neighbours seeing this would start whispering, asking questions, calling the police. But here, nothing. It seems not just strange, but entirely unrealistic. In the magical world, there are ways to hide such things. Muggles may simply not have realised what was happening. The Ministry of Magic might have cast spells that made the owls invisible or appear ordinary. Maybe Muggles saw the owls but didn't think much of it because their minds were magically blinded. Wizards always know how to cover their tracks. Perhaps the neighbours did see something, but their consciousness just didn't register it as anything unusual. In Harry Potter's world, magic often interferes with Muggle reality to make everything seem normal. Any strange event is quickly forgotten or appears mundane. The Ministry might also have cast spells that made Privet Drive invisible to outsiders during the event. People simply didn't go outside or didn't look toward the Dursley's house. Even if they noticed something, their memory could have been quickly altered or erased. There's a theory that the owls themselves had magical properties that helped them stay unnoticed. In the world of magic, even such ordinary creatures can be endowed with special abilities. Perhaps they didn't just deliver letters, but also protected the secrets of the magical world. Situation number four, platform nine and three quarters. Platform nine and three quarters is the heart of the magical world. It's where the journey to Hogwarts begins. Wizards walk through an ordinary-looking brick wall at King's Cross Station, disappearing right before the eyes of Muggles. But how do they remain unnoticed at one of London's busiest train stations? Crowds of Muggles are bustling about, and disappearing people should have caused panic. Imagine, early morning on September 1st, the station is buzzing like a hive. Families with children dragging heavy trunks and owl cages head toward the wall between platforms 9 and 10. One by one they disappear, as if dissolving into the air. Any passerby might stop in shock, but no one even notices. Under normal circumstances, such disappearances would cause a real uproar. People would scream, call the police, and try to figure out what's happening. But here, nothing. Muggles go about their business, not noticing anything strange. This isn't just magic. It's masterful concealment. The Ministry of Magic has thought this through well. Muggles might simply not see those heading toward the wall. Or perhaps they see them, but their minds immediately refuse to process what's happening. This explains why no one notices the disappearance of children and their parents right on the crowded platform. Concealment charms likely cover the entire area between platforms 9 and 10. Muggles pass by, not noticing how someone disappears right next to them. It's as if their eyes see it, but their minds instantly erase anything unusual. Such magic seems incredible, but in the world of Harry Potter, it's an everyday reality. The Ministry might use other measures as well. Perhaps magical devices are installed on the platform that automatically erase the memory of anyone who notices something amiss. These devices work unobtrusively, ensuring complete secrecy. No muggle leaves King's Cross with memories of strange disappearances. Hagrid once told Harry, Just walk straight at the barrier. Don't stop. This isn't just advice. It's part of the magic that hides the platform. It not only conceals it from sight, but also tricks the minds of those who can't comprehend what's happening. Muggles simply can't grasp what they're seeing. 
but even with all these measures, it's strange that no muggle has ever noticed something unusual. Perhaps the Ministry of Magic occasionally has to erase the memories of those who accidentally see too much. But mass memory erasure is risky. Too many people might start to suspect that something strange is going on. Situation number five, the escaping snake. In the zoo, Harry Potter first realized his magic. He accidentally freed a giant snake by making the glass in its enclosure disappear. The snake slithered away, thanking Harry in parcel tongue. But how could this go unnoticed? The crowd of visitors should have erupted into chaos. Imagine a busy zoo, crowds of people, and suddenly a snake on the loose. Someone should have screamed, called security, and caused panic. But instead, silence. Even Dudley, who fell into the enclosure, only complained about the cold. The reaction, to say the least, is strange. In a normal situation, such an incident would have caused real panic. A free-roaming snake and disappearing glass would be perfect reasons for an evacuation and a major investigation. But it all went almost unnoticed. Muggles seemed to have just forgotten what they saw or didn't even realise the strangeness of the situation. The Ministry of Magic likely intervened immediately. They could have used spells to erase the memory of the people present. In the world of Harry Potter, such magic is common practice. This explains why none of the visitors raised the alarm or told anyone about what happened. The glass was likely quickly restored by magic, and no one noticed its disappearance. Magic could have hidden all traces of the incident before anyone had the chance to ask questions. Everything was returned to its place as if nothing had happened. The snake itself was probably under spells that made it unnoticeable and harmless. In the world of magic, even such creatures can be enchanted to avoid attracting muggles' attention. This allowed the snake to disappear without causing any panic. The ministry acted quickly and efficiently. The glass was restored, memories erased, the snake vanished. This is the true art of hiding magic. Wizards do everything to ensure that muggles live in a world where magic doesn't exist. But how impressive it is that everything was covered up so quickly. This shows how seriously the Ministry of Magic takes its task. They can't allow even a random incident to reveal the magical world to muggles. Situation number six. The entrance to the Ministry of Magic. Imagine an ordinary day in London. People are bustling, hurrying about their business. In the city centre, in a public restroom, someone enters a stall and doesn't come out. For muggles, this would be strange and frightening. But for wizards, it's just the entrance to the Ministry of Magic. Using public restrooms as an entrance to the Ministry is an unusual solution, to say the least. These places are visited by hundreds of people every day. Muggles might notice that someone disappears, and this would raise a lot of questions. But strangely, no one notices anything. Imagine the reaction of Muggles if they found out that people enter a restroom and don't come back. Panic, speculations and calls to the police would be inevitable. But this doesn't happen. The restrooms remain ordinary, and Muggles continue to use them, unaware of what's going on. Clearly, the Ministry of Magic has thought this through. The restrooms are likely enchanted so that muggles don't pay attention to people disappearing. Perhaps the stall doors are bewitched to appear normal, even if someone doesn't come out for a long time. Furthermore, muggles might not even see the wizards entering these restrooms. Invisibility charms or notice-me-not spells might make wizards invisible to the outside world. This explains why no one suspects anything strange. The restrooms themselves likely appear completely ordinary to muggles. Wizards pass through, but to muggles, it's just an occupied stall. No one wonders why someone is taking so long. Muggles have no idea that these people aren't coming back. The Ministry may also use other precautions. Wizards might use the restrooms at specific times when there are fewer people around. Or there might be magical devices in the restrooms that erase the memories of those who accidentally notice something. 
everything is done to maintain secrecy. But even with these measures, there is still a risk. If a muggle happens to be in the right place at the right time, the ministry would have to act quickly. Perhaps that's why entrances to the ministry are carefully guarded and hidden under many layers of magic. The passage through the restrooms is a striking example of how magic and the muggle world intersect but remain invisible to each other. It's a complex game of concealment requiring constant vigilance, but despite the risks, muggles continue to live, unaware that the magical world exists right under their noses. Situation number seven, apparition. Apparition is one of the most thrilling abilities of wizards. In an instant, they can move from one place to another. But how could this go unnoticed on crowded streets? The sudden appearance of a person should cause panic. Imagine a busy street in London. Crowds of people hurry along, and suddenly someone materialises right in front of them out of thin air. Normally, this would cause shock, screams, and maybe even someone recording it on video. But strangely, muggles don't pay attention. Remember when Harry, Ron and Hermione apparated to a crowded street while escaping from Bill and Fleur's wedding? They appeared right among passers-by, but no one raised the alarm. How is this possible? They should have drawn attention to themselves, but magic always finds a way to cover its tracks. The Ministry of Magic likely has its methods of concealment. Perhaps there's a spell that makes apparition invisible to muggles. This would explain why no one notices the sudden appearance of wizards on the street. For muggles, it simply doesn't happen. Moreover, apparition might be designed to happen almost imperceptibly. Wizards might automatically use spells that prevent muggles from understanding what happened. Muggles see the result, a person who is already standing there, but don't realize how they got there. But there are risks. Apparition is complex magic, and if something goes wrong, the consequences can be unpredictable. For example, a muggle might accidentally be too close and notice something strange. This requires wizards to be extremely cautious. Thank you for sticking with me to the end. I hope this means you found it interesting, and if so, don't forget to like, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to the channel.